Hey everybody, sorry, just trying to get my microphone on so everybody can hear me. I had to move it, had to get it set up, it's right here, here. you can't see it on YouTube. I don't think TikTok can see it either. So, anyway, hope everybody's doing alright, had a, had a good weekend, or week, ready for the weekend, so to speak. Oh boy, hey Caden, hey Ricky, nice to see you both. <laughs> Joyce Bennett, I like this before you started. Thanks in advance for the advice. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you liking the video. For anyone else that's watching, don't think, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, live streams every Thursday night, like tonight. Always come here. Try to answer people's questions. The last day of March. Hope everybody's doing all right. Ready for April. Springtime has tr truly sprung. So, hello, Carla. Everybody's doing good in YouTube tonight. Let's see. Let me share my stream. Let's Green Acres PC. And I think it's slash live. Let me see. Is that right? questions? That is right. That is right. There we go. Let's go ahead and share that with the Discord. For those wondering, I do have a Discord live right now let's see let's go into oh someone says are we going live let's see here general live now uh at everyone and copy the link and press enter there we go send now there are 111 plus people in discord so there we go Put that up there for anybody that's on the Discord. If you had to give a two-minute presentation on bed bugs, what would you say? That I'd have to think about that one. Um, it depends on what the presentation is about. Are you talking like maybe you know the the, the habits, the life cycle? That I mean, there's so much you can talk about bed bugs. Um, typically, I mean, it doesn't take me long to discuss things about bed bugs. I pretty much know everything to say. I've said it so many times. Um, but typically what I would probably say is bed bugs hatch within six to 10 days of an egg being laid. The adult will, uh, feed about once a week and, uh, she only needs to feed once every eight weeks to lay eggs. She can get all she needs for that eight week period off of your blood to lay eggs. Um, one female bed bug, uh, if left alone, uh, an impregnated bed bug can become 38 million in a year. And it is important to be proactive. Just because you have one or two does not mean you will have, you won't have more. They will get worse if you do not start taking care of the problem. And that's pretty much what I would say in the two-minute break, which is less than two minutes. I don't really talk about chemicals in presentations, mainly because chemicals change. And I want something to be universal. Now, when we talk about... You know, on YouTube, I talk about, you know, not using diatomaceous earth, not using heat treatments, not doing alcohol, like all the different things that I tell people not to do. Um, but there's, I mean, the thing is that that won't change. That won't change. That'll pretty much stay constant. Pesticides change. Um, the pesticides have changed a lot over the years. I've been using different pesticides, you know, for 30 years so I don't really, I don't think I would really talk about pesticide usage so much unless people came to me after a two minute presentation and asked a question, then maybe I would go over different pesticides I was using at the time. Do you ever use oil based for your sprayers? I've used oil based pesticides before, if that's what you're asking. Di uh, uh, Durzban and Diazinon are both oil based, they're petroleum based. They have a petroleum distillate in them, uh, much like what's in an oil based paint. And so, uh, but those chemicals you can't use anymore. But there are different ones that do have oil in them. Typically, the pesticides that smell have oil in them. You know, the oils, like an oil-based paint, as it evaporates, as it, you know, cures, it will smell. And if a pesticide has a smell, most of the time it's because it has oil in it. Can you quickly go over why heat treatment does not work? Heat treatments don't always fail. They fail a lot more than what other exterminators like to admit. The problem is, is that pesticides... Hey, Emma, what you doing? Sorry, my daughter's sitting here with me. She's playing a video game with my wife. Um, so, 
Heat. Heat has it, heat is a new way to treat bed bugs. All right, and I say new because I've been in the industry for over thirty years. It's a fad. It is going to uh, pass. It is not going to to be something that people do in the future. I, I really believe it. I mean that I've been wrong before. Let's see what happens. But uh, sorry, my eyes itchy. Um, but with with the heat treatment, a lot of companies like to claim you know, 90, 80, 90 percent effectiveness. The problem is, is that, you know, I don't go on the ones that are successful. I go on the ones that fail. And the many that I've done where other exterminators have done a treatment and it has failed, most of the time it is a heat treatment that has failed. Um, and that's why I don't do heat treatments. That's why I don't recommend heat treatments. I would probably grant warrant that it's, you know, 70 percent effective maybe. Um, but I don't think it's 100% effective. I don't think it's 90% effective. I don't think it's 80% effective. That's why I don't do heat treatments. That's why I don't recommend heat treatments. Um, Crossfire is very effective. Crossfire is so effective that novices like Jennifer, if you let me use your name, she's my mod in, in there tonight. She helps take care of the channel for me. Um, Jennifer had bed bugs. Jennifer bought Crossfire. Jennifer used Crossfire. Jennifer got rid of her bed bug problem. Um, that's not a professional, not required to hire a professional, and able to go in there and use the pesticide and get rid of her bed bug, bed bug problem that's very effectively. That's a very good chemical. Not all chemicals are that effective to where a person can just go in, do it on their own without professional help. You know, I'm not standing there over her shoulder showing her this is how you treat it, this is where you do it. She just watched my YouTube and was able to do it on her own and got rid of her problem. You can't do that with a heat machine. You can't go and buy a heat machine, heat up your house, and get rid of bed bugs effectively on your own. You're going to need to hire a professional to do it if you're going to be successful. If you're going to be successful, you know, that's the thing. You want to be successful. And that's why I recommend doing a heat, I mean, not a heat treatment, but a pesticide treatment instead. If you spray Crossfire on a fabric like a mattress or a bed spring, box spring, uh, does the 30-day yield still work on that fabric? Like, if they go across it, to drive in. Yes, 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 it still works. So the chemical pesticides work through um, exposure. So when a bug is exposed to it, whether it is liquid or dry, whether it's wet or dry, um, it will kill the bug. Now, when it's wet, it will kill it faster than if it's dry, but they will still dry from it. I mean, they'll still die from a dry residue. Even if it's a fabric, an upholstered piece of furniture, or something like that, if the bed bug crawls across an upholstered piece of furniture that's been treated with the crossfire, it will kill it. It doesn't have to be a non-porous surface, like a hard surface. I've had four heat treatments because my apartment's management will not allow chemical treatments. They definitely don't work from someone in chat. Uh, don't know. I guess that's Korean. Um is Crossfire an aerosol? Crossfire makes an aerosol, but I don't recommend it. Uh, I only recommend aerosol if you are waiting for the liquid to get to your home. So there are there is a Raid product uh, that is Crossfire, but it's an aerosol can. I do recommend that for if you're waiting for Crossfire to arrive and you need immediate relief, something that will kill the bed bugs really quickly until the crossfire gets there. But it's basically the exact same ingredients as crossfire, so it's not going to negate what you're using. It's not going to get rid of, so to speak. So, so the problem with crossfire is because crossfire is a non-repellent pesticide. Most pesticides are highly repellent. If you spray something like, uh, you know, what, Talstar or uh, some other type of pesticide, most of them, Home Defense, you know, Harris, the yellow label or whatever, and you spray that stuff, most of it is highly repellent to bed bugs. And then you spray Crossfire on top. Crossfire is a non-repellent. So the bed bugs are going to see the repellent because they're both dried together. So the, the, the repellent is going to shine through the non-repellent, and so the Crossfire won't work. So I recommend only using non-repellents. Now, you can use things like Alpine. You can use uh, Temperid. Those are other pesticides that are non-repellents that won't impede the ability of Crossfire to work. Can you use Crossfire if you have young kids? Yes, I have young kids. I used it. Stop. 
six weeks ago, five weeks ago, six, no, months ago, sorry, six months ago, uh, before my baby was born, um, and he's five months old now, so yes, you can use it with young children. That was a question from TikTok for those in Yahoo, or YouTube. YouTube, Yahoo, YouTube, not Yahoo. Oh, let's see. If I put bed bug powder in my plugs and other small places I can't vacuum, will it affect the crossfire treatment? Just don't do that. Don't do don't do dust. You don't need to use dust. Just use crossfire. Um, the the thing is, all right, they'll just continue to hide in the same cool places they hid before to survive. Correct. That's right with the heat treatment. But with all right, crossfire is a non-repellent. The bed bugs don't see any treatment. When you treat with Crossfire, they do not see the chemical. They do not know anything's been done at all. And so, it's like that game. When you play as a child, the floor is made of lava. All right, my kids still play. I used to play when I was a kid. I taught my kids how to play. All right, you throw down a pillow on the floor and you jump from pillow to pillow to pillow and you try to get from one spot to another without touching the floor because the floor is made of lava. Now, you can't see the lava, but in your mind, it's there, all right? Crossfire is a pesticide that they cannot see. It's like the floor is made of lava, but they don't know it. They, they can't see it. And so when they crawl across it, it kills them. It's very effective. So when you talk about using dust in the wall and all these different things, you don't have to do that because if the bed bugs are hiding in the wall, they can't get a blood meal from an electrical outlet. They can't get a blood meal from a 2 by 4 They can't get blood meal from drywall. They can't get blood meal from panel board. You know, they are going to have to come out and bite you. And with you being right there in the room, they're going to come out. They're going to bite you. They're going to crawl through the chemical. Treat your baseboards. Treat your uh, treat your headboard, footboard, bed rails. Treat the box spring, mattress. You know, treat all those areas so that the bed bugs have to crawl through those areas to get to you. And you don't have to dust. Dust is... is you have to understand how to use a dust. You can't just sprinkle it around. You can't just, you know, it, that's not how it works. In fact, if you go to my uh, my Amazon page, which I do have one, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to use it. But if you go to my, oh, that, by the way, that's my YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button over here. But um, if you go to my Amazon page, I did fix it since last week. They went and changed it on me. But right here, this is a duster. This is used for pesticide dust. That's what you use to do a dust, and you don't you don't hold it this way. You hold it the other way around, so it's so the stick is up at the top, and you puff it in the wall, and so it hardly anything comes out. You want a very light light mist of dust coming out of the tip of that duster. That's how it's effective. All right, it's not effective if you don't hold it upside down. What you do is you shake, you fill it about half full, you shake it up real good, you turn it upside down. It makes a foggy cloud inside the duster or a dust. And the dust puffs out the tip. But you don't need to use a duster. It takes a finesse. It takes a certain ability and a certain skill. And that's why I tell people, you get your sprayer, and you buy a crossfire with right here, and you mix it up, and you spray, and it's easy. It's easy. It's, it's idiot-proof. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It's idiot-proof. Trust me. Um, do you have to vacuum after you spray crossfire? Back, vacuum before you spray crossfire. Um, steam clean before you spray crossfire. Steam clean. Yeah, if you're going to steam clean. If you're going to steam clean, steam clean before you use crossfire. Don't steam clean after. Heat can break down pesticides. I know crossfire, I think crossfire has on the label that it can that it can withstand a lot of heat, but I don't recommend it. I don't think that it's going to be able to hold up to, you know, just using it in a cooler environment. You don't want to use it and then heat it up. Do you have a vacuum? Do you have to vacuum? Okay, he already said that. I frequently use demon with oil base on insects. The insects go into convulsions when they get sprayed with that combo. Um, demon is oil-based. You don't have to have an oil base in it. It, it is an oil-based pesticide. It has petroleum distillates in it. Um, thoughts on alpine flea and bed bug. Alpine flea and bed bug is an aerosol. It's not really that effective. Aerosols are not that effective. Um, I've been waiting on Crossfire to come in the mail for a month now. I get eat up all the time. Hubby, talk. where are you from, Katasha? You might be in an area that you won't get be able to get it. Because if it's taking you a month to get to you, that's crazy. Because it shouldn't take a month. It should only take a couple days. 
I believe Alpine is losing effectiveness against bed bugs because they are becoming resistant. That's true. Um, and it does work against other bugs. But the problem with Alpine is it's only one ingredient, where Crossfire is three. Um, do a lot of professionals use Crossfire? No. Nowhere near, nowhere near as many that should. Um, you should. Crossfire is one of the best pesticides on the market. But the problem with, with the industry right now is that people like to, um, and I'm talking to TikTok too. YouTube. There's a TikTok camera right here. In fact, let's see. That's right. That's the back of it. See, that's my phone. Okay, and that's my ring light. See? That's, oh, that's my Merlot cup right there. Merlot right there. Anyway, um, so I'm talking to TikTok too, not just YouTube. But uh, I had a question that, from TikTok. It says, do, do a lot of professionals use Crossfire? I am in Texas. And I was explaining that a lot of professionals don't use Crossfire, and they should but they don't because you make more money off of a heat treatment than they do off a crossfire treatment. Um, how long will the bed bug powder last until it goes away? Don't use bed bug powder. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Um, I don't, I, I think you need to suck it up with a vacuum cleaner. It's not effective. Have you done roach clean outs with Alpine WSG? I have. If so, do you use an IGR abate along with Alpine? I use, um, Alpine and I use Vendetta plus uh, Vendetta Nitro, which has Nygard in it. I use Jason's Amazon page to order my supplies. Um, I like the way you spelt it the first time, Jennifer. Is Flex 1010 a good pesticide? I don't know. Let's see. Is Flex 1010 a good pesticide? Let's see. Flex 1010 insecticide. I like that song. Uh, permethrin. Yeah, it's probably pretty good. Piperonal butoxide, it's probably pretty good. Permethrin's not too bad. Let's turn my head sideways so I can read it. Let me see. Can I do this? Aha! Let's see. 10% permethrin. That's not too bad. That's pretty good. It's going to be a repellent. That's a that's a highly repellent pesticide. But it's good. It'd probably be good for spiders and stuff. Really good for spiders. Um See, this is this is this is another thing. Uh There we go. Um it says here that Let's see. Long sleeve shirt, long pants, shoes plus socks, chemical resistant gloves such as barrier laminate, butter, lip, yeah, okay. Chemical resistant apron for mixers so you don't get stuff all over you. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's probably pretty good. It wouldn't be for bed bugs, I don't think so. I don't think it's got those on the list, let's see. Are bed bugs even on the list? Shake well before using a flu one ounce. Um, controls mosquitoes, flies, wasps, hornets, yellow jackets. Oh, this won't work very good on hornets or yellow jackets. They've got these as options. Wasps, hornets, yellow jackets. I will tell you from my experience with permethrin, permethrin doesn't work very good on wasps, hornets, or yellow jackets unless you spray it on contact. Otherwise, it's not going to work on them. Um, it's for gypsy moth. Caterpillars, Japanese beetles, mole crickets, grasshoppers, tent caterpillars, ants, crickets, earwigs, fleas, ticks. It's got a lot of lot of things on the on the list. So yeah, it's probably a pretty good chemical. Um Oh, you're never late, Michelle. I haven't said much. Does bed, do bed bug, when they die, make a sweet, acidic, burning smell? Smells bad. I don't know. Let's see what they smell like when they're dead. Well, these don't smell like anything because they've been dead for a long time. I bring out my bed bugs every now and then. I showed YouTube, too, what they look like. I mean, not YouTube. I already showed YouTube. I mean, TikTok probably wanted to see them, too show them to. Let's see. Do you think interceptors work? No, I do not. 
Um, in fact, I have seen where in interceptors most of the, almost every time they fail. 90, 80, 90 to 99 percent they fail. What are your thoughts about Alpine Roach Gel? Do you think Alpine is the best gel or Advion? Advion's good and Vendetta are good. I have not used Alpine Roach Gel bait, so I'm not sure. But if I'm applying Alpine a liquid, then I'm not going to use an Alpine bait because basically it's the exact same chemical. I would use a different chemical. So the way you kill roaches is you wanted to use multiple different active ingredients. So if you have a bait, you want the bait to be different than your liquid and you want your dust to be different than your liquid and you want that way everything is different and your dust is also different from your bait. So that you're using three or four different pesticides so that if because roaches develop immunity so quickly that and, and other people are using chemicals too, not just you. And because roaches are typically generational, they're from other people that have been using pesticides. I recommend using multiple different active ingredients so that you eliminate your problem quicker. That's much more effective to get rid of cockroaches. Um, can you apply Alpine to a mattress? No, you cannot. You cannot apply Alpine to a mattress. You can to the, to the box spring, but not the mattress. Um, how is suspend for bed bugs? I don't use suspend for bed bugs. Um, can I spray crossfire on my sofa? Yes. Why do you have a jar of bed bugs? Because why don't you have a jar of bed bugs? I could ask you that question. Why don't you have a jar of bed bugs? I have one jar. I have, let me see here. I have two jars. I have a bag with some more. Okay. Why don't I, I have a baby bottle of bed bugs? Why don't you have bed bugs? You know, I could ask you that question. Hey, you be nosy asking me why I got a jar of bed bugs. Why don't you have bed bugs? All right. Um, if interceptors don't work, how do you stop bed bugs from crawling up onto the bed? You don't. You spray them, you kill them. What is your opinion about sea kyle? I don't know what sea kyle is. Is that like a like a, a, a squid version of kyle from South Park? Can you use crossfire without a sprayer? No, you really need a sprayer, but you can use a you can use a paintbrush to apply it. But I would recommend a sprayer; it's easier. Uh, you want the bed bugs to crawl to the bed, to crawl across the chemical to die. Exactly. Um, I have a customer. I had a customer. She was a customer. Her bed bugs are dead now, but she. I went to her house three months in a row to try to kill her bed bugs. Three months. And I found out the last visit that she was taking interceptors and putting them under her bed. Every single time I would leave the house, she would put interceptors under the bed because she didn't want the bed bugs to crawl up the bed. And I told her that's the way crossfire worked. And she didn't want them to crawl up the bed. As soon as she took the interceptors off of her bed legs and stopped using them, she threw them away the day I was at her house. Um, the bed bugs all died. So you need to do away with bed bugs. Bed bugs, I mean, not bed bugs, the uh, interceptors. Well, you need to do away with bed bugs too. But you need to do away with your interceptors. Don't be afraid of bed bugs. There's nothing to be afraid of. And don't let them loose. They're dead. I, they used to be alive. They used to be alive. I've got these little jars. So this is, this, is what in the, this is what you call a feeder tube. So it's got a little screen right there in the top. I don't know if you can see it or not. If it's going to show you. See the little screen right there? It's not going to focus, I don't think. But anyway, there's a little, little teeny tiny mesh screen. And if you take the lid off, there's actually a, another screen in there that gives a, a easier access for babies. Um, and so what you do is you take it and you, you put your live bed bugs in here and then you hold it against your arm like this. And because it's a screen in there, the bed bugs can actually feed through the screen and they can bite you and they can get a blood meal. Now, I've never been able to do it. I told people when I got a thousand subscribers that I was going to let bed bugs eat me. And I didn't do it. And then I told them when I got you 10. Out. And then I told them when I got 10,000 subscribers, that's Alicia, she said I'm a wuss. And then when I got 10,000 subscribers, I said I was going to let them eat me and I wussed out. And then I didn't say anything about 20,000 cuz I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do if it. If you get 200,000 subscribers, I will get on camera and let them eat me. If no, you won't. Yes, I will. There's only 80,000 to go. That's going to happen eventually. <laughs> so now Alicia, my wife, who never gets on camera ever, she never, ever, ever gets on camera, 
has said that if I can get to 100,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, that she will get on live and she will let them eat her. And she's insane. She's crazy. They will come out to feed on live bait, human bait. They can't die if they do not come into contact with the chemical. That is true. Okay, so here's the question. If you have bed bugs, how long have you been getting bit by bed bugs? Can you not handle just a couple more weeks while the crossfire kills them all? Then they're gone for good. They're gone for good. You know, the, the thing is, is sometimes with bed, well, every time with bed bugs, you have to understand that sometimes it takes a little while to get rid of them. And if you're just willing to put up with them for a few more weeks, they're all going to die and they're all going to be gone. And just, just, but the thing is, most of them will die. Most of them will not be able to make it to you to die. I mean, they'll die before they get to you. I had a customer one time that I treated for bed bugs, and he called me three days after I treated and said when he pulled the sheets off, he found three dead in the bed. They hadn't made it to him to bite him, but they were close, but they died before they got to him. Uh, that doesn't happen every time. Most of the time you do still get bit for a few times after you apply for crossfire, but it's, it will kill them. Just be patient. Let's see. So I ordered my crossfire and it comes tomorrow. I'm concerned about where all to spray. Do you have a video explaining where all to spray? I do. I do have a video um, of how to spray. Um, if you go to, let's close this. I don't need that up anymore. If you go to my YouTube channel and then you click subscribe right here. It's By the way, my YouTube is youtube.com slash Green Acres PC and Acres is spelled A K E R S and that's stupid thing right there. There we go. All right. So uh, anyway, you go down and you search in my videos right here and you search uh, bed bug and these are all the videos I got on bed bugs. All right. And if you go down, just keep scrolling. There it is. The most extensive bed bug treatment on YouTube. I actually show people how to kill bed bugs on this video. In fact, if I click it and I click share and I copy the link, I can post it to you here. There you go. That's how to kill bed bugs. So, how long can bed bugs live without oxygen? I don't know. I never tried to suffocate one. Let's find out. Now I'm curious. How long can a bed bug live without O2? Uh, eight hours. All right. Like other living things, bed bugs require oxygen to survive. A 2016 study showed that bed bugs were susceptible to very low oxygen levels and nearly completely mortality could be achieved in as little as eight hours. So you could suffocate them in eight hours. So there you go. There's your answer. Eight hours. That's a good question. That's a curious question. So could you technically use carbon monoxide? No. Of no, Alicia. Don't say it. those things. Well, people start thinking don't those say things. those things. Just don't. If you say it, it puts a thought in their head, and I'm going to end up with people dead. They're going to suffocate themselves to kill the bed bugs. They're going to kill themselves. Don't say stuff like that. My wife giving people ideas, crazy ideas. I sprayed Crossfire three days ago and waiting 14 days to retreat. I'm going to do it every 14 days for six months. I mean, you can do that, but that's a waste of good chemical. Because I agree with Jennifer Lego. She said, wait 28 days, once a month is all you need to do. Because she's right. Jennifer has been here for several years, I think. She's... That's why I made her a mod, because she's always here. She hangs out. She treats my YouTube chat like a job. I don't even treat it like a job that she does. <laughs> I don't, I'm never late to a job. You know, when I have a job and it's important, I'm on time. And, and I'm never on time for YouTube. <laughs> I'm always off. I'm always late. I was late tonight. Ten, I'm almost 10 minutes late tonight. I, and you started setting up really early, like, I'm going to get on early. Well, the thing is, all right, so let me show you. So when you go to my Amazon page, now, this is where I list all my pesticides that I use in my business. Now, this looks nice now. This looks nice. 
Last week, when I pulled up my Amazon page, I didn't see that they had done this new thing where they have all these little icons. And Because see, if you look at the list, like bed bug supplies. Like this is by probably my number one list that everybody goes to. All right, there are 20 items on that list. It had a picture of a B&G right here. This, this same picture was like splattered across every single list because I want people to understand that this is what I use. This is what I use to kill bugs. This is the piece of equipment that I recommend, all right? But, and it's on every single list, but because it's like one of the last things I put up on my, each one of my lists for all the different things, it put that as the, as the, the, the showcase image. And so it's kind of irritating. But, but like here, you got bed bug supplies, lice, tick control. See, these are all the different things that I recommend people use for different types of bugs. And so that actually looks really nice. But I, when I lo loaded it up tonight, I was like, I need to fix that before I get on live because that was embarrassing last week. So I didn't want it. It's, it looks dumb when they go and change that on me like that. I didn't know. I don't go to my list and buy my stuff. I've got my own suppliers I use to get stuff, and they won't sell to you because they sell only to licensed professionals, and unless you got a license, they won't sell to you. So, anyway. But yes, I recommend treating your house once a month with Crossfire. Once a month. No more than once a month. Um, I recommend for a novice, someone that's just not you know, experienced using it, um, to go pr pr figure on treating at least two or three times, at least, to do it on your own. Because being, you know, a non-professional, you may, you may miss a spot. You may not apply enough. You may not mix it properly. And, you know, if you're doing it two or three times, it ups your chance of success. So, is temperate just as safe as crossfire? You need to read the label. The thing is, is I'm not here to say which pesticide is safer than others. You know, that's not my job. That's an entomologist, maybe, maybe a chem the chemist that, does, does, that, you know, invents the pesticide. They could be more successful at telling you what is, you know, what is more, more dangerous than another. But Crossfire is pretty safe. I know that Crossfire is pretty safe. And that's why I recommend it on YouTube because people do stupid things with pesticides like spray them all over their body. And, I mean, I had a guy call me. I talk about this all the time. The guy that, from New York that called me that said he was spraying, you know, flea dip all over his body to kill bugs. I don't recommend doing that with any pesticide ever. But, you know, when you go online and you start saying, this pesticide kills this bug really effectively, people will spray it all over their body because it's, people aren't smart. People do stupid things. So... I thought fumigation was the same thing as suffocating bed bugs. No, it's not. Fumigation is actually, so the way fumigants work, it depends on the type of fumigant you're using. If you're using a gas, then it's going to actually penetrate through the wall. It's going to absorb through the bug's body. And it's going to kill them uh, through pesticide. The pesticide re residue kills them. Um, if it is like a fogger, like you're using a fogger in the air, which is also like a space treatment, um, that kills them through residual on surfaces. And so when bed, bed bugs or cockroaches or whatever crawl across the surface, it will kill them. And so, no, fumigation is not a, um, it's, it's, it's not a form of, of uh, suffocation. You know, removing the oxygen from the air. You know, pesticide does not remove the oxygen from the air. Bugs breathe oxygen just like me and you. So... I mean, I guess you could say they sometimes suffocate. Most of the time, it just kills them. It poisons them. Do you think that temperate is effective spray for roaches? Yes. Temperate is a metacloprid. I think it would be very, very successful at killing roaches. Are you okay, Emma? She got killed. Looks like you got killed. No. But the most common way that fumigates work is through um, absorption. I guess they could work through suffocation. But most of the time it's just absorption is the way they work. You okay, Emma? That was too much for you, wasn't it? She jumped out of her skin over here. That was a jump scare, wasn't it? She's funny. 
sitting here beside me, act like she's gonna fall on the floor. <laughs> At least she didn't scream. No, she didn't scream. That's gonna kill you too. You're gonna get eaten alive by a bear. There you go. That's how it happened. <laughs> Poor thing. She's not having good luck with her video game tonight. It's killing her. <laughs> So let me see. I had a question in my YouTube that I wanted to go over. Let's see here. I rub Crossfire all over my body and now I'm so addicted to it. It's the most intense you Oh my god. That's not funny. How's Charlie? Does he like being a big brother? Yes, he does. But he is he he likes to run around the house in a pull up. And so or underwear. And so he's not on tonight. He's not gonna be able to make it to the stream tonight because he's a nudist. And uh YouTube don't like nudity. I can only get Harris in Arizona. What would you recommend? Spray only once a month or more. I've had bed bugs longer than three years now. So, if you go to Amazon, I think it's still there. If you go to, let's see, bed bugs New York and Canada, it's broken. Let's see. It's broken. Will that one work? That one works. Why won't that one work? There we go. Alright. So this is the Harris 5 minute bed bug killer with odorless non-staining blah 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 blah. Alright. This right here. Now the active ingredients in Harris is the same active ingredients that's in Crossfire. So you can use that to kill bed bugs. You may have to apply it more than once a month. I don't know what the label says. You should obey your label, but that's the same thing as Crossfire. Um, truthfully, the, the problem with a lot of these store-bought pesticides is that this is mixed with water. If you buy Crossfire, which is 13 ounces, you mix 13 ounces of Crossfire and 115 ounces of water, which equals 128 fluid ounces of active ingredients. Just like on this bottle, it says one gallon, 1.128 fluid ounces, 128 fluid ounces, all right? That's how much a gallon of Crossfire is. So the problem is, is that how long was this sitting on the shelf before you have to use it? If this is the only thing that you can buy in your area, this is going to be better than pretty much any other pesticide option that you've got if you cannot get Crossfire. There are some states in the Union where Crossfire cannot be shipped to you, and this can. So I recommend this in those, in those areas. I did not see Michelle's question. Let me see what Michelle's question is. Let me scroll up to Michelle's question. It's easier to just ask me again. Does an enzyme cleaner negate crossfire? I need to use Nature's Miracle on my rug. I was given it a few days to try before spraying. Should I use my rug? Yeah, go ahead. Use your rug cleaner first, then use crossfire. You'll be fine. Oh, you asked the question. Well, thank you, Jennifer. See, she's, I tell you, she's like, it's like a job to her. It's like a job. She's here, and she's, 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 she's my, she's my worker. She does it. She's nice. It's, I appreciate that, Jennifer. I didn't notice that you had typed it before I read it. Went up and found it. But. Water. It's good for you. So I got a question. How many people here in chat know what crunchy ice is? Does anybody here know what crunchy ice is? I'd like to know. I know there's a delay. So I'll wait a few minutes. But I'd like to know if people in chat know what crunchy ice is. <laughs> 
Should I spray my car? Yes, you should. Okay, so crunchy ice. Let me explain to you this irritating thing. I, it's really annoying to me. I don't like it. I bought a new refrigerator. Alright, we need a new refrigerator anyway. But let me show you this. Right here. Now this is it. This is this. Alright, so this is crunchy ice. If you've ever been to Sonic and gotten crunchy ice, alright, it's these little teeny tiny pellets of ice. And this has nothing to do with pest control. Nothing to do with pest control. This is a gripe, and I'm irritated. I'm really irritated. I'm going to do a video about this, put it on my Facebook or something. I don't know, but it's annoying. All right? This is crunchy ice. I love crunchy ice. Sonic has crunchy ice. Chick-fil-A has crunchy ice. It's really good, and you can give it to your small children, like my son. He's, uh, he's three, and he chews it, and you don't have to worry about him choking on it because he just chews it up. It's real brittle, and he chews it up. It's real good ice. All right? But here... All right, so this is this is Samsung's new fridge, okay? It's got four doors, so you got a freezer on this side. This can be a fridge or a freezer, but I got both of these set up as a freezer, and the two on the top is a refrigerator. All right, this is the ice machine. The ice machine makes cubes, and then it makes these little ice bites right here, okay? But it's not this ice. It's just little teeny tiny ice cubes. They're hard. They're hard cubes. Okay? So if you're thinking of buying these crunchy ice thingies here and you want it because you're like, I've been so excited. I had to wait two months for this stupid dang refrigerator to because to, getting a refrigerator right now is, is like any appliance for your kitchen. If you need a new appliance, and I need a new fridge. If you need a new appliance for your good luck, good luck getting it. But they're hard. They're not like the ice from Sonic. They're not. They're little teeny tiny hard pieces of ice. I was going to say poop, but they're not like poop. It's ice. Anyway, that's that's my gripe for the day. My wife brought me ice. I just got it hooked up yesterday. Jennifer Lego don't like Samsung fridges. I like Samsung fridges. I've never had a problem with them. I know a lot of people complain about them, but I've never had a problem so with them. So far, our only complaint has been the crunchy ice was... The like only complaint I've ever ice. had is that the crunchy ice is a false advertising piece of doo-doo. Okay? It's a piece of doo-doo. I wish it had the crunchiness to it. I wanted crunchy ice. Because I was like, Charlie will love that. Charlie and Emma both. Now, I'm not too big on really eating a lot of ice. But Charlie and Emma both love ice. And I always have to worry about my three-year-old choking on stuff that's too small and hard like candy and ice. And so, anyway, vegan diet's not hard. Vegan diet's easy. It's easy, especially in the summer. When the kids get hungry, you just take them. And if you, especially if your grass needs mowing, you just take them say, go out and graze, my children. And they will just, they just cut the grass for you. It's really easy. Vegan diet's easy. But anyway. So that's my complaint. Stupid Samsung. Making me mad. But anyway. I hope everybody's having a good night. I'm irritated I don't have crunchy ice. That's my gripe for the day. I don't complain about too much stuff. I complain if I don't have my crunchy ice because that's one of the things that sold me on the refrigerator was the ability to have little bitty ice cubes that my kids would like to eat. So, but Emma is now nine, for those that don't know. She turned nine. Yeah, I've been vegan for almost six years, right, Alicia? Will it be six years in April, won't it? Yeah, I think six years for you, eight years for me. Yeah, six years for me, eight years for the wife. Um, none of my children, all my children are vegan, too. i tell you what, I'll tell you a story about ice. My mom, she's uh, she's she would have been 61 this year. She passed away when she was 53. She um, well, she would be 62 this year. She her birthday is December 30th. But um, she used to love ice so much that she would eat all the ice out of the ice machine, and then she would go downstairs. And we had this problem. Now you could be gross. This is gross. It's a gross story. It grosses me out. I think it's gross. But she would go downstairs 
and we had a uh, a stand up, not not a chest freezer, but a, a tall one, what do you call the vertical freezer or whatever. And it would get ice build up. She'd take a butter knife and she would scrape the ice off the side and eat it. That's how much my mom liked ice. You get a freestanding ice crusher. Yes. Why well, though? But the thing got the ta I got the counter space. I don't have counter space for it. I got so many things. My wife's got a rice machine that makes rice. Yeah, we got a great. bottles. We got bottles. Oh my goodness, the bottles. <laughs> the bottles take up like a quarter of my countertop because I got a steamer for the bottles. I've got the little thing to warm the bottle. I've got the bowl that you put the dirty bottles in to keep them separate from the dishes. And then I got to wash the bottles and I got to steam them. And you got to do that like two times a day at least. And then you got to, oh, it's so much. I don't have room for another thing to sit on the counter. Do you think that Phantom is effective on contact for kit roaches? Um, Phantom's not really used for on contact so much as a residual. And it's a slow acting residual for cockroaches. I don't recommend Phantom for roaches. Um, it will kill them. If you don't have anything else, but there are other pesticides that are better. My eyes are itchy. It must be the pollen. It must be the pollen. Jennifer said we need to just put shelves on the walls to put our ice crusher on there. And get a secret. I'm sorry if I'm just rubbing my face too much, but my eyes are super itchy tonight. But it's out. It was really nice today, and I was out in the sun. And the wind was blowing and whipping around and every time this time of year. Oh, my eyes are probably bloodshot. No, they're not. Usually they get bloodshot horrible this time of year with all the pollen. I hate pollen. Pollen is an awful weird way for plants to reproduce. Anyway. 22 people in chat and I got uh, 10 likes I get some more likes um, what do I recommend for spiders pretty much any synthetic pyrethroid will kill spiders I recommend those for spiders they work the best um, brush down all the webs uh, if you're trying to get rid of you know, jumping spiders, hunting spiders, whatever you call them. Um, you should granulate your yard. Granules work really good to keep spiders out of the house. And so I usually recommend that for spiders. Spiders aren't hard to kill at all. They're really easy to get rid of. Most every bug, truthfully, spiders, ants, crickets, cockroaches, silverfish, bed bugs, all bugs can be controlled with a general pest control maintenance. You can do it yourself, or you can hire somebody to do it for you. But you want to treat your house at least once a month. I know a lot of these businesses go out and they do like bi-monthly and quarterly visits. And they're just not coming often enough. People still have bug problems all the time because they're not getting pest control often enough. You really need a monthly regimen. And I find that once, after 90 days of monthly pest control, once a month, Treating around your windows, your doors, baseboards, all these places, you can usually go with an outside only treatment because you've killed all the egg cycles in the house. Everything's hatched, everything's died in the house. All the bugs have died in the house. Then all you're worried about is keeping the bugs out. You know, whatever's coming in from outside, they're going to die. And so you're not going to get reinfested. And so as long as you just, you've got to be religious, you got to do it once a month. The way I set my customers up on their schedule is once a month on like the first Monday or once a month on the third Wednesday or whatever. I pick a day of the month and it never changes. What IGR do you like using for roaches? I don't use a lot of IGRs, but Nygaard is in my uh, bait, and I, so I like Nygaard. Does Crossfire work for anything other than bed bugs? It's really only labeled for bed bugs. But it will kill other bugs. It's just, it's labeled for bed bugs. So I can't recommend it for anything but bed bugs. Um, there are pesticides that do just as good for other bugs that are cheaper. And so like Alpine WSG is a really good general use pesticide. Demon is a really good general use pesticide. 
Um, temperate is a good general use pesticide that works for other bugs. And I would recommend using those for other bugs, not Crossfire. Use Crossfire just for bed bugs. It's really expensive and you'll save money using something different for other bugs. And you want to get, you have another tank. You have, you have one tank for Crossfire and one tank for your other general pest control. Do you really worry if you only see one random spider? <laughs> some people do. I have a, uh, yeah, some people, some people really do. Some people really, really hate one spider. Arachnophobia is a real thing. It is a real thing that affects a lot of people, and they're just really terrified. And to people that aren't afraid, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I'm not really afraid of spiders anymore, but I used to be, and one spider would freak me out, and I hated it. I'm not that afraid anymore, but, you know, I kind of can't be. It's my job to, to kind of get used to being around bugs. I mean, I've got jars of bed bugs. I mean, why don't you have jars of bed bugs? That's my question. Why don't you have jars of bed bugs? Anyway, that's my question for you tonight. I'm reading a message I got. So, I had a question that came in. Um, I drive a truck, and I'm on duty when you stream. I wanted to ask about how bed bugs live. Give wait a minute. How bed bugs cause PTSD? What I have experienced. I would see out of the corner of my eye what I thought was a bed bug, but it wasn't. You've been so helpful. I was up to $800 when I came across your advice. My mother and I thank you. So he said that he developed PTSD over bed bugs, where he would just see something out of the corner of his eye and freak out thinking it was a bed bug, but it wasn't. And that's a common thing, too. That doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean you have a bed bug. Have you ever seen a black widow up close? Many times. Many, many, many Customers times. Customers give them to you. I, oh, yeah. I did have a customer give me a bed bug one time. I mean, not bed bug. Well, they give me bed nice. bugs. But You've had two customers give you black widows. Yeah. Yeah, in a jar. I had customers give me black widows in a jar. And he brought it home. Yes, so I did. I brought it home. I put it in the refrigerator. I didn't have any bugs to feed it, so I wanted it to slow up, and I didn't want it to die, so I froze it. And free, well, I, I guess it did freeze, but yeah, I wanted to teach the kids about spiders, so I brought it home. <laughs> you know, it's funny, because my wife's laughing at me over this, but, alright, so have you ever heard, alright, so Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb would surely go. It followed her to school. All right, so I am the one, I am the guy that brings pets home from school. they just got lots of legs. They got more legs than a dog or a cat. They just, eight legs, six legs, you know. Some centipedes got lots of legs, you know, hundreds of legs. All right, there's nothing wrong with bringing your pets home as long as you take good care of them. Well, this is, this, this is dead. All right, I didn't take very good care of these bugs. So I haven't brought any more home because I didn't feed them like I was supposed to, like goldfish. You know, if you don't feed them like you're supposed to, you can't have them. But this, this is the only burial I got. I'm not, I'm, I keep them to show you what they look like. All right, people are in my chat, and they ask me. They say, Jason, what do bed bugs look like? So I pull them out, and I'm like, here they are. You want to see them? I'll show them to you. Now, I could do a search on Google, and I could show you what they look like. But I've got them right here. This is way more entertaining. I got these, and I told my wife, Alicia, I'm going to bring some bed bugs home. And she's like, what? What is wrong with you? And I brought them home, and she said, get those things out of my house. And I said, I don't want to get the bugs out of the house because I want to show people what they look like. I do YouTube live streams. People ask me all the time, 
it's way cooler to show you what they look like. I mean, you could do this. See, now, well, let me show you. Don't you open that up. It's open. It's open. But see, you could do like this. You could show them like oh. this. See? Now, let's, uh, let's put it right on the lens. Look at that. Oh, see, that is really cool. And see, I can dump those out in my hand like this. And she'll freak out. And that's way more entertaining. That That's entertainment value. You ever see Fear Factor? They, that's a fear factor. See? Smart. Anyway. PSA, if you get a new tank for Crossfire, use water first to familiar yourself with Yeah, I agree with that. That's a good that's a good piece of advice. So uh, Michelle says if you get a new tank for Crossfire, use water first to familiar yourself familiarize yourself with it. My new sprayer had some kinks in it. Thankfully I was using water. I would have lost a ton of product. Yes, because they leak. And so it's better to learn how to use your sprayer before you actually put active ingredient in it. That's actually a really good piece of advice. Some guys are interested in sports. Others, cars. Jason likes bugs. Don't judge me. Alicia. Uh, Jennifer just said that. Jennifer said, yeah. I don't judge. She doesn't judge me for keeping bugs in, in, my, um, in my house. So, they're not alive. They're not, not alive. Not anymore. They were when you brought them home. Yeah, they were alive when I brought them home. But they're not alive now. They're dead. And I starved them to death, and I feel horrible. I mean, I named them on stream. That's, that one right there is Helga, and that one is Olga. That's Finn. I don't think that's Finn. Oh my god. You see the stuff I gotta put up with Jenny? I called you Jenny. Sorry about that. I don't know if people call you Jenny or not. My aunt's name Jenny. But her name's not Jennifer though. Her name's Virginia. Virginia. <sighs> Ricky says, don't feel horrible. You're the man. Alicia. People that like the fact I bring bugs home and show it to them. They like the bugs. It's just a part of your job I've had to accept. It is. It's not, I mean, all right. So, I don't have to bring bugs home with me. In fact, I prefer not to on my pant legs and stuff. Sometimes I, I shake them off at the customer's house, leave them back behind me. But it does happen sometimes I bring bugs home. Um, like fleas. I don't like to do that. Fleas. But. I did bring bed bugs home once and it wasn't intentional. I did do that one time. Charlie likes bugs too. Charlie kills bugs. Charlie's a murderer of bugs. What was it? Here, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here, tell them your story. <laughs> so, we bought appliances for President's Day sale because we were wanting to get them before everything broke. And I was getting the stove ready and I pulled out the bottom drawer where they have that drawer you can keep your pans in and when I pulled out all my pans there was a little spider in the corner and I flipped it over onto the floor and I said oh no Charlie it's a spider and he came running in he saw it jumped back ran and got his little croc shoes and started stomping on the spider did not stop until he was sure it was dead yeah <laughs> and he's like okay mommy I got it <laughs> So Charlie's an exterminator. He's three, but he's an exterminator. Charlie for president. I don't know if I can handle any of my kids running for a public office. Okay, so someone just actually posted a comment two hours ago on one of my videos about bed bugs on YouTube, and I just happened to see it come up in my notifications. And it says, my mattress and box spring are newer. I never took the plastic wrap off uh, on the box spring off that it was delivered in. So do I need to take it off and spray, steam it, or do I just need to treat the mattress? I think it might be safe. It's not. Um, 
Bed bugs can get in around the plastic on your mattress. Bed bugs can get in around the plastic on your box spring. It is not airtight. It's only wrapped in plastic to keep it from getting dirty in the shipping process. It is not safe. It is not protected. You need to remove the plastic from around your box spring and your mattress before you treat with Crossfire. Treat them with the pesticide. That's what you have to do. So Jennifer said Charlie's like baby Taz. <laughs> he is. Absolutely. So. Yeah, the plastic can have miniature holes. That's true. Well, like, you had a customer that had a case that, and they had done a heat treatment. Yes. With encasements on. Yes. And you went in after them. Correct. And there were bed bugs still alive in the encasements. Yes, there were. There were. And encasements aren't as thick as that plastic they wrap a mattress in. Mm -hmm. Confession time. My neighbor brought me a jar of bed bugs to show me, and I kept them for a week until my ex-boyfriend came over and made me throw them out. See? You understand the love of a pet. Michelle understands. She understands. Her. There is there is a certain love that you have for your pets, and your and your and your spouse makes you get rid of them. You remember how I was allergic to cats? Mm -hmm. Yep. I love you very much. Yeah, I know. Thank you, honey. I'm allergic to cats, but my wife had two Siamese cats uh, before we got married, and uh, one of the stipulations of us being able to be together was she had to get rid of her cats. Now, I've known my wife since she was seven, and she'll be uh, 27 this year. Right? 27 this year? <laughs> She's getting irritated with me now. I'm not going to talk about age on camera. Some people already know my wife's age anyway. Oh, Jennifer's in real estate. Really? She she moderates a real estate a, a level a real estate channel. I'm about to buy a new mattress and box spring. Do I saturate them or just spray the edges? Just spray the edge. Don't saturate the mattress. You never do that. There's no reason to saturate. You just treat around the edges, the seams of the edges. So, someone here posted and said they had hired a company to spray twice in his semi-truck and they're still alive after the company has sprayed twice. A lot of people don't know how to treat for bed bugs. Um, you hire somebody professionally and they don't do the job correctly and it's a shame, but it's the truth. Um, sometimes you get somebody who just doesn't understand what they're doing. And so that happens. I actually did a video about the differences in pest control companies. Um, didn't get a lot of views because those videos never really get a lot of views. But it's bed bug and pest control practices and the reason not all pest control companies are the same. Uh, one of the biggest things I get in the industry is people like to call and, well, we got a call right now. Let's see what they got to say. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? You know, I've got a question for you. All right, what's up? Uh, I, I, I live in Norfolk, and uh, I've, got a, I've got a question. to be a, a mild case of bed bugs. Is, is it effective to spray uh, fire with the, uh, the pesticide in just, in just one room? I don't recommend it. I recommend doing the whole house. Um, I mean, you can try it and see if you're just going to do it yourself, but I usually recommend treating the whole house. Okay. I have people call me and they're like, you know, can I get a cheaper price if you just treat one room? And I tell them I don't, I don't do that. I'm not that kind of exterminator. I treat the whole house because I find that, I mean, even the Department of Agriculture put out a letter, this was maybe four years ago, 
talking about why exterminators are ineffective at getting rid of bed bugs, and their number one reason is because they're not doing enough. Of, they're not doing enough. You know, you can't just do one room because bed bugs will be tracked on your clothing, on your shoes, um, just yourself. You, you can move them around. They will travel through the house. And so, uh, just like fleas, fleas will travel through the house. Just because you don't have them in your living room don't mean they're not there. So I would, I would assume that they are everywhere and just treat it all. Now, if it's like a rooming house where you rent a room, that's kind of hard to do. You may only be able to treat your one room. All right, thanks a lot. All right, you have a good night. Norfolk. That's my neck of the woods. That's Virginia. Jennifer, quick on the band hammer tonight. Uh, we got some trolls. We always have trolls. It's good to have trolls. When when all right, so when I first started my company, this was six years ago, I didn't get very many calls. I liked when I was getting calls, even if it was solicitors. Because I'm like, well, if a solicitor thinks I'm important enough, then maybe maybe other people will see my phone number too. And I kind of think that with, you know, YouTube, the more popular you get, the more trolls you have. And so it's not necessarily a bad thing to have trolls. It just means you're popular, even with trolls. <sighs> May have answered before, but I'm new. How, do you get, how did you get into this field? I, so my father started his pest control company in the 80s, 84. He became incorporated in 1985. I was born in 1981, and so I started doing pest control when I was about six or seven years old, and now I'm 40. I just still do it. It's the only thing I do. I love pest control. It is my life. I, I, don't, I don't have to do YouTube, but I like killing bugs, and I feel like the, um, the knowledge that I have gained, because... It's not just about pest control to me. I'm fascinated. I mean, I'm fascinated with bugs. I'm, I'm fascinated. It's like chess. If you've ever liked... I love the game of chess. All right, you play chess, and you're trying to figure out how to defeat your opponent. Bugs are like the next opponent. It's like stage three, level three, hard, trying to get rid of your, your opponent. And so I enjoy pest control to the point where I research all the time. And I, and I learn these things, these researches about bugs and all this stuff, and so I share it with people. That's why I do, um, that's why I do what I do. It's for, the, it's for the people. Would you recommend people to move to Virginia? Why not? Virginia's great. There are a lot... Okay, and, and, and also, Jennifer, this is my business. But I did work for my dad's business. I, I started my own company in, six years ago. Um, but Virginia, there are a lot of beautiful places in this country. I've been to Vermont. I've been all of New England. I think all of New England is gorgeous. I love Vermont. It's probably my favorite as far as beauty. I think Vermont is, is just great. I like North Carolina. I like uh, South Carolina, Georgia. I love Georgia. I like, like, uh, Florida. There's lots of places I've been. I like Texas. But all of those states mentioned, I wouldn't live there. I would live in Virginia. I'm Virginian born and raised. I love Virginia. Um, there's very few places in North America where I would be comfortable. Um, I like the mountains. I grew up right looking up at the Blue Ridge Mountains every single day of my life. I enjoy the parkway. I like the Peaks of Otter. Uh, these are Bedford County. Yeah, I live in Bedford County. Um, Poplar Forest is right here in Bedford County, uh, which is Thomas Jefferson's summer home. Um, I've been to Monticello, Williamsburg, Jamestown, Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach is ugly. I don't like Virginia Beach. But, you know, I'm not far from North Carolina or South Carolina where the beaches are prettier. Even uh, Maryland, you know, has prettier beaches than Virginia. But other than that, the mountains you can't beat. You know, I've been to the Smoky Mountains. Smoky Mountains are pretty. I still prefer the Virginia Mountains. I like the Blue Ridge mountains here in Virginia. That's just what I like. And so uh, that's what I look forward to, you know, getting up and going out to the mountains. I like camping. Lots of good places to camp in Virginia. Um, 
And so, you know, I just, I like Virginia. But I've been to a lot of places. I've been to the tropics even. I've been to St. Martin, St. Thomas, um, you know, several different, you know, islands. I've been to what, Bermuda. And uh, I still think Virginia's the nicest place I've, I've been. So... Ricky says, uh, I'm glad you're on YouTube. You helped a lot of us. Yeah, I'm glad to help. Okay, Jennifer. Some people do believe that I inherited my father's business, and that's what Green Acres came from, but it's not. It's actually my own business. So I was just trying to reiterate that because some people do believe that that's the way it is. You should fix that truck. Keep it from decaying. Because it will if it's not on the floor in there. So, I'm talking to Emma. She's playing a video game over here and I'm watching her. So, it's a slow night for questions. I got some questions, but not a lot of questions. Just chit chatting, which is fine. We could chit chat too. But I like asking questions about bugs. We can ask questions about the parachuting spiders from Georgia. Have you heard about the parachuting spiders from Georgia? No. Is this a joke? No. It's not. I've got customers asking me if I'm looking forward to killing them. What are they? They're parachuting spiders from Georgia. That's all I know. I haven't looked up the, because I haven't had time to look them up now yet. It's a parachute spider. There we go. Parachuting. I thought you said parachuting. No. Shooting. No, no, no. <laughs> Large parachuting spiders can soon invade the east. Dun, dun, dun. Large parachuting spiders could soon invade the east coast. Study finds. The authors say the arachnids are harmless to people and pets. But they'll still scare ya. I'm looking forward to getting rid of parachuting spiders. Anybody else get parachute? Everybody see the parachute spiders? I don't see what they do. Let's see. Let's watch a video. You want to watch a video with me? Let's watch a video. All right. Let's see. My vision improved after I threw away all my eggs. That's Here's a, why. That's a commercial. If you're struggling with vision loss. And when you think parachutes, you think military heroes, thrill seekers, and high-flying celebrations. But do you think spiders? No, never. But Wash Tuesday Dave McDaniel is introducing us to a spider, not East yet Coast. in Florida, but one that could make an airborne entrance into your neighborhood. Oh no, that's terrible. Large Look at that to thing. Cover your palm, the Jorah spider is quite colorful. Huge? Oh yeah. But the spider yeah, is an invasive yeah. species oh. settled presently in Georgia, likely after They're in Georgia. on a cargo ship from Asia. In their native range in East Asia and Japan, they do they do go pretty far south into some tropical climates. That's At the cool. University of Georgia, Andy Davis has studied the Joro and believes that while it's been in Georgia nine years now, it may likely expand its range north oh, and you south, see that? including no, Florida. It's huge. You can't see them all there. These Joros are really wimpy, and so they're, they're more likely to run away than attack anybody. Um, so there you go. That's something I get to attack soon. I'm sure that's going to happen soon. Has anybody seen any of those yet? How much money do you make a year on average? It really depends on which streets I walk. Uh, Jessica Renee says, You helped me last year with fleas. Now pantry moths are ridiculous. Oh, yes, they are. But what you to get rid of pantry moths, meal moths, you have to remove everything from the pantry. You have to look into all your stored products, and you have to throw away anything that has the webbing they make this webbing inside your, uh, like, bird seed. Bird seed's notorious. If you feed the birds, keep your bird seed in a different container. Both cat food and dog food is also needs to be sealed and kept in separate containers because they're not monitored as heavily by the FDA, and so you'll get bugs and that kind of stuff. So meal moths are really difficult to get rid of, but the way you have to do it is you have to take everything with any... any meal moths in them and you have to seal them and throw them away get rid of it take your other stuff that the meal moths could be attracted to like crackers and grits and stuff like that and seal them up in ziploc bags just in case there are moths in these 
type containers. If you see their cocoons laid on any of this stuff, throw it away. Get rid of it. Not worth the risk. It's just going to cause you a headache keeping it. Throw it away. And then treat the inside of your cabinet with a synthetic pyrethroid, something labeled for moths. Treat around all of your cabinets. Wait until it dries and then put your food back in the cabinet. But check all grains. All grains. I completely, Jennifer's right. All grains. Everything. Not just loose grain, but also processed food. They could be in those too. Because typically what happens is people will buy bulk, like flour or untreated broth but like untreated unbleached flour is really notorious for the eggs you never see the eggs the eggs are mixed in with the flour and they hatch when you bring them in the house and then they will move into other products that you have so that's why you need to check everything even stuff that isn't stored product i don't think i have a video on moths i think that question was asked a couple weeks ago and I still haven't done a video on moths. My latest video is going to be about heat treatments anyway. I just, I have it. I filmed it. I haven't had a chance to edit it or put it together yet. But it's it's a pretty long, in-depth video. It's something people, are, a lot of exterminators are going to hate. They love to hate on me when I make those heat treatment videos. And I can't wait. I like to, I like knowing that, that people don't like what I have to say. It means I'm saying something right. But. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna stay on about ten more minutes until eleven o'clock and then I'm gonna go ahead and log off. My eyes are really burning tonight. It's bothering me trying to read all the screens. So if you got any questions and you want your questions asked, ask it quickly. So because I only got ten minutes left. I haven't gotten up and peed not one time tonight. And I've been drinking water and everything. I must be dehydrated, because usually I have to get up twice to pee. <laughs> so much that I even made this. Hey there, I made that. You like that picture, Emma? It says, the bed bug show, AFK, will return soon. Because that's my pee scene, so I have to use the bathroom. I can put that up there and people know I'm using the bathroom, and I'll be right back. I usually play some music, some nice pretty music while I'm using the bathroom. So... You see, did I ever answer that question? I think I did. Has anything happened to me lately? I've been in a new house three weeks, no bug sightings. Should I spray anyway? Don't really want to. If you haven't seen anything, don't. If you don't have a headache, don't take an aspirin. Do you treat for mice? I do. My friend lives in an area with a lot of new construction, and the mice are making her crazy. So... I have a, a whole series that I did on mice. Um, if you go to creative, oh, it's right there. It is right there. It's, uh, well, that's one on rats there and mice, but that's an invader series that I did. This is uh, things that invade your house in the winter and holiday invader species. That's six of those. But if you go to my playlists, let me see. Uh, termite, Vacation, Myth May, Stink Bugs, um, Stories from an Exterminator. That's pretty cool if you want to see some crazy stuff. Watch that one. Let me see. Let's search mice. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel when you go when you go check it out. Mouse Monday. There it is. It's 12. See, right there, third on the list. If you search mice, there's 12 episodes, and it goes over exactly how to get rid of mice in your home and around your home. So, I recommend going and watching that playlist. So. I gotta go to bed. Thank you again. And have a great night. You too, Ricky. Sweet, sweet dreams. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Let me see, I found bed bugs. I have found bed bugs in my truck cubbies away from my bed. Why would they be there? And also, should I take all the stuff out before? Yes, you should take everything out and treat it really well. Um, and as you put stuff in, treat it. So like your bed, take everything out of the truck. Treat the truck. Treat the cracks and crevices throughout the truck. Then, when you put your bed back in the truck, treat the mattress. to Take sheets and stuff off. Treat your mattress, put it back. And then 
uh, treat your, you know, everything, treat your cubbies even, treat your cubbies, put everything back in the car. Because the problem with an automobile is an automobile is a very enclosed, tight space. Cars, trucks, even if like truck driver trucks, they're still very small space. It's like what? 100 square feet. It's hardly anything. Maybe even less than that. It's not a lot of space. Bed bugs will travel up to 10 to 20 feet away from a host to lay eggs, to live. And so you want to treat all those areas very thoroughly. Don't treat your covers or your pillows or anything like that. You can launder those. But everything else needs to be treated you know, as best you can. Read the label, follow the label, and you won't poison yourself. It's safe. You won't hurt yourself as long as you follow the label. Patrick asked if I do with wildlife, deal with wildlife. I do sometimes. Um, I used to do a lot more wildlife when I worked for my father because he had a pickup truck, but I work out of a Kia Sorento, and so I don't have, I'm not going to put a wild animal in the back of my car. Uh, I do have a trailer that I pull behind the car, and I've considered doing wildlife on that, but I just don't have, I don't, I don't get the calls for wildlife. And, and another thing, with wildlife control in Virginia, you have to have a place to dispose of an animal. The thing is, is it's against the law in Virginia to uh, relocate an animal. The only animals you're allowed to relocate in the state of Virginia are uh, squirrels and snakes. And then you have to have written consent. So, like, if, if you had a barn and you wanted me to come and release a snake in your barn, maybe you're wanting it to control mice or whatever, I have to have written consent from you that I'm releasing a snake on your property. Okay? That's, that's the law in Virginia. So if I catch a groundhog at your house, I have to dispatch the animal, I have to kill it, and I have to bury it, or I have to incinerate it. I don't own an incinerator, and I don't live in a part of the county where I can just bury dead animals on my property. So I don't really do wild animals right now. I have an ability to, I am licensed to, I've kept my license, my trapping license is valid, but I don't do it right now. I just, I just don't have an ability. So I refer them out to animal, um, to the, uh, to the different companies around Lynchburg, but animal control can only control dogs and cats. That's it. So if you call animal control for something else, they uh, typically won't be able to take care of it for you. Not in Virginia, anyway. Um, which, in the same respect, I can't deal with cats or dogs. Uh, that's animal control's job. So, like, animal control in Virginia, they deal with cats and dogs, where I deal with everything else. I do snakes. I do bears. I can do bears. I can do skunks. I can do beavers. I can do lots of different animals. But um, cats and dogs are not included. What's the best way to get rid of products you didn't use like crossfire bed bugs. So as long as you haven't mixed it, you can keep it on a dry, cool place for several years and it stays good. But once you've mixed it, you have to throw it out. Um, you need to contact your local state uh, Department of Agriculture or equivalent of whatever and ask them what to do with it. They will know better than me. Um, in Virginia, they have pest control, elim pesticide elimination uh, program where at different times of the year you can take it to different locations and it's like a pe basically it's a pesticide dump and they will take it and get rid of it for you um and so that's what we do in virginia but in you know other states are different i can't really be i don't know what to do you know honestly you have to contact your state it's the only thing i could tell you to do I agree with Jennifer. Treat your treat your car, treat your truck, treat your van, treat your camper. You know, get rid of it, use it. It's a good pesticide. You don't want to waste it. So, oh, so three more minutes. I'm gonna give you all the way till eleven o'clock. I'm enjoying answering questions, but my eye is really killing me. I'm gonna have to put some eye drops in it or something. When was the last time you dealt with a bear? I think the last time I remember dealing with a bear was when we were camping. But, oh, that wasn't a bad message. Like Jennifer. Hey, that is okay. He's okay. But we do get bears in Virginia. It's actually a pretty common thing to get called on. 
I get calls on bears sometimes. So, it happens. <laughs> oh. But y'all have a really great night. I appreciate it. I'm going to get on to bed. I'm going to get fix up my eyes. I really can't stand it anymore. But y'all have a great night, and I'll see you next weekend.